Now we are live with our webinar, Taking OER to the Next Level. I welcome everybody out there, and I hope that you can use the chat to let us know from where you are listening and watching to us um, this afternoon. We're very, very happy to introduce to you today our initiative taking OER to the next level. That's the name of the webinar and the initiative behind that is called European Network for Catalyzing Open Resources in Education. It's a webinar in the frame of the Open Education Week operated by the Eden Network. And if you have any questions during our webinar, during the next one and a half hours, please feel free to type them into the question and answer tool, which you find um, on your operation dials where you are, actually. Um, so I'm uh, very happy to have this time to introduce my colleagues. Also, later on, uh, we are very pleased uh, to have you here. And I'm starting to um, share my screen with you. Um, we are going to talk about the what we call Encore Plus project. It is the European Network for Catalyzing Open Resources in Education. We will tell you everything about it and the rationale behind it and the challenges which we try to solve. Um, my name is Ulf Ehlers and I'm talking to you from beautiful sunny Germany today. Uh, the evening sun is out, the sky is blue. I hope that's also true for you. Um, and um, we are going to have an overview after um, we are doing some introductory remarks um, and a poll to also take stock of your strong beliefs about OER, you as the community. Um, we're going to have a um, um, an overview of the initiative by uh, Julian Grainley, the project uh, manager from ICDE and Laura Balassina. Uh, then we are going to have an introduction into our uh, quite new, we are very excited about this uh, community model, the community model, uh, which we are going to um, conceptualize and implement uh, across Europe in the next three to four years. Um, we are going to have what we call an open corner. So we are really interested if you are listening on YouTube or if you are uh, watching us uh, as, um, as a Zoom participant. We are really interested in your feedback, in your comments. Uh, not just questions actually, also recommendations and statements like, did you already look into this? Or for your purpose, there is a best practice existing and that's to be found here. So these are the comments we would like to have. Of course, also your questions, but also the collegial feedback from everybody, the peer feedback. So that's the open corner moment of the webinar in the middle of the webinar. And we're going to take stock of that a little bit to look at the chat to what's written. Um, that's your moment to give us feedback and um, uh, tell us your opinion. Then we are going to have um, the most lively and excited part, exciting part of our webinar. That's what we call a chat show. Um, it's a moderated chat show with four experts, which we are having. And these four experts will explain the four corners uh, of the universe, the four uh, directions, so to speak, north, south, west, and east of our project the four perspectives we are looking at OER from. Uh, then we're going to have a greeting message from um, the project lead from ICDE, General Secretary Torun uh, Gwelswick, and um, a Q&A session in the end uh, to ask further questions. The participants of this webinar are all here 
um, listed it's Julian Granley, Laura Bralassini, Michael Krencho, Anna Farrell, Robert Farrow, Sylvia Baldiris, Tina Marie Monilion, uh, Turan Gwelswick, and Ulf Daniel Elas. Uh, so uh, you will meet them um, throughout the webinar. And without further ado, I'm now going to ask to start the first poll. We are interested in where are you actually from? What's your background? And secondly, in a second question, uh, what do you really believe? So tell us what is your current background? Are you a student a learner, an educational professional, including curriculum design, quality assurance, or any other professional role in your institution, an institutional leader, including institutional policymaker, or a policymaker from government, national government, or European uh, level? Are you a researcher? Uh, an HR professional or um, uh, anything else. So that's the first question. Answer please now to this question and then go to the next question. And here we are interested in your strong belief, you know, when you lean back and think about, oh yeah, tell us. Within the next five years, OER will reach its full potential and become the first choice as a learning resource for higher education and industry. I repeat, within the next five years, within the next five years, OER will reach its full potential and become the first choice as a learning resource for higher education and industry. Tell us if you agree or disagree rather with the statement. You have five choices from strongly disagree to strongly agree. So please make your cross, make your choice. And then we're giving maybe a few more seconds uh, and then close the poll and have a look who's here with us and what are your views on OER. Thank you so far from uh, the chat side where everybody introduced themselves uh, from Dublin, Croatia, Italy, Germany, Colombia, Sweden, Croatia, Ukraine, Romania, Dublin, Ireland, Croatia, Latvia. Wow, truly international Croatia, Iceland, G Iceland, wow, UK, Romania. Um, aha, colleagues from the Merlo repository Brazil Croatia so welcome to everybody I think we can we can now close the poll and publish the results so here are the results I hope you can see them I can see them um, what is your current background we have most of us are education professionals including curriculum designer or any other professional role we do not have any policymaker with us, so that's where we need to improve, but uh, we have some students, we have um, institutional leaders, management from higher education institutions and other institutions and organizations, researchers, HR professionals. So welcome everybody. Uh, and now let's go to the uh, second. I can already see just on a first glimpse that we are here preaching to convert it because um, most of you, um, more than about 63% are on the positive side with our statement, which means that within the next five years, OER is really taking leapfrog and um, uh, uptake in higher education. So thank you very much for that. And now I would just, before I hand over to the project coordinator, to the coordinator of the initiative, to Julian Grainley, from um, ICDE. I would just like to tell you a little bit about how things came about and led up to Encore because actually it was a three year process. So um, we are a bunch of organizations which were involved uh, within the last, uh, last 10 years, I would, I would say. I was looking it up and listing it here into all major and uh, minor and uh, important um, uh, OER projects, starting from Opel in 2010, where we looked into quality or OER test, where we looked into um, uh, credentialing and stacking uh, different uh, OER learnings together, PowerUp, um, Lang OER, all 
probably projects which you might be familiar with. And if not, go to the web and look it up, look the results up. This is really the history of European uh, project, the short history, not a comprehensive, not a complete history. So don't be uh, annoyed if your choice is not showing up here. But um, the group of, of organizations with which we are today undertaking this initiative encore uh, was involved in, let's say, the trace and the leading through the last 10 years of uh, OER uh, initiatives um, uh, and has um, um, uh, then decided to come together and to crystallize what is there um, into an initiative which is not looking into developing OER uh, or which is not looking into um, creating new repositories. Uh, it, it is really a group of people which have been involved into creation, into um, development, into innovation. And now we are looking into creating a European network, a knowledge alliance in which we are sharing the solutions which are out there and leading them into broad implementation. That's really the purpose and we will hear more of that. Involved, of course, were milestones on the way. ICDE was doing a feasibility study three years ago on the question, how can um, um, OER repositories globally collaborate in a better way? And then, of course, the uh, UNESCO recommendation, which in the end, I think, uh, was also the final decisive milestone to have this uh, initiative becoming a reality, also with an aim to implement um, the UNESCO recommendations for a European um, sphere. We were working and submitting proposals to the Commission on such an alliance in 2018, in 2019, and in 2020, we were finally successful. And now here we are with the Encore Initiative, the European Network for Catalyzing open resources. Um, and the special thing which is just put together here in one um, sentence is that apart from higher education, we would like to see how we can also um, approach the field of business and enterprises and startups and innovation services around OER. Um, that's going to be a main issue and you will learn about that more from uh, today's webinar. Um, so, um, that's really what Encore is about. And now I hand over to my colleague, Julian Grayley, and later also to Laura Balaseni, um, telling us first about the project in itself, the project logic, and uh, then also about the visual story and identity about, of Encore. Thank you, Ulf. Share my screen. All right, so Encore, uh, my name is Julian Granley. I, as Ulf mentioned, I am the project manager for Encore as uh, ICD is the coordinating partner of this Erasmus Plus project. I also work in ICD as a development manager. So the purpose of this uh, bit of uh, today's webinar is to give you an overview of the project and really what we are trying to do. Uh, and um, yeah. To begin with, I wanted to introduce the partners. Uh, so we are nine partners in this uh, consortium. ICDE as International Council for Open and Distance Education, we are the coordinator. And uh, with us uh, in this consortium, we are with DHBW, Open University, UNIR, uh, Knowledge for All, UBEL, FPM, uh, Canvas, and DCU. Now, you'll see that the partners are a good mix of both there are NGOs, there are universities, there are also private universities, and there are businesses involved. Uh, and this is very important for the consortium and the project in general, for our approach to work on both academic and business side of OER. And so the question is, and it's built on what Ulf just uh, introduced a bit as well, is where are we or where were we when we uh, started this project? So we had the UNESCO recommendation on OER uh, and the need for increased cooperation to make digital open education a reality for all. And then all Europeans, as this is also a European focused uh, project. 
There is poor integration with edtech in the education sector, uh, low adoption of OER for skills building in, in companies and in the public sector. There's issues with OER adaptation, adoption and implementation across borders, uh, right? We're looking at uh, differences in language, legislation, and also culture. Um, and then there are many more. So to start with, uh, in getting the feel and the understanding of the project, we can start with the challenges, uh, and then we'll move away from the challenges. Um, we have addressed uh, or we have identified five challenges that we are looking to solve and address with these, uh, our project. The first challenge is the fragmentation of the OER stakeholder communities in Europe, lack of collaboration and interoperability among European OER repositories, low development of OER institutional strategies in European businesses and academia, lack of an integrated European OER quality paradigm and quality assurance mechanisms. The last challenge is the lack of entrepreneurial innovative approaches and business models based on OER. You'll see uh, how we are uh, incorporating these challenges into the project um, when we continue. But the question is, is there a solution to these challenges? Uh, we, we do think there is. Uh, collectively, uh, we, we are looking to solve these. So uh, one way of looking at this, or the way we want to see it, is that Encore Plus is a coordinated European approach, strengthening the value of OER as a catalyst and multiplier. We'd like to see a move from a series of individual OER initiatives into a European OER ecosystem. We uh, think it's necessary to address and contribute to European and international policy priorities, um, stimulating innovation in businesses, through learning and uh, training innovation, supporting the modernization of higher education in Europe, including digitalization, and bridging non-formal and formal education by advancing recognition of open learning. All right, so based on that, we've identified some objectives. Um, the five objectives that we are trying to reach with our project is to set up and support a sustained and well-mapped European OER stakeholders network based on well-connected higher education and business communities. Foster collaboration and connection of OER European repositories into a European OER repository ecosystem. Ecosystem is a keyword. Stimulate the integration of OER institutional strategies within businesses and academia. Establish an open, distributed and highly trusted community-based OER quality review paradigm and working mechanisms. And lastly, demonstrate the innovation potential of OER within business settings and promote successful OER business models. We believe there is potential for great impact uh, through stimulating innovation uh, in learning and, and teaching uh, to stimulate or make sure that there are better access to quality OERs, uh, support for language and culture adaptation, local companies uh, to gain access to uh, quality training resources, um, innovation through OER, so creating opportunities for local entrepreneurs, companies, edtech, enhance local educational repository functions, and increased inclusiveness of higher education. This is the structure of our project uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Erasmus Plus uh, style. We have split our work into eight packages. Uh, the um, the partners on the side, they can represent uh, a lead or a co-lead. However, uh, we are all heavily involved in all of the work. The, uh, what you will see when we continue is the work package two creates this um, ecosystem. So building the European network of catalyzing open resources in education, I would like you to remember the keyword ecosystem. Um, and then our four topic areas, uh, Changing Technology Paradigm, the Future European OER Ecosystem, which is number three. Number four, Strategies and Policies for the European OER Ecosystem. Quality for the Future or European OER Ecosystem and Supporting Innovation. So the last bit then uh, would be to try to visualize the Encore model. Right? We've looked at the challenges uh, that we've addressed or we've found. We looked at uh, the objectives that we have with the project. And uh, let's call this the how. Um, and uh, 
in the middle, you find uh, the Encore Catalyst uh, network, which is the ecosystem. Around, you find four circles. These represent the four topic areas that we believe we need to work on in order to solve the five challenges that I mentioned earlier. So the four main topical areas that we are focusing on in Encore is quality, OER technology, policies and practices, and innovation and business models. Now you see those five challenges hanging around the outer perimeter of this, and in the middle, we have an ecosystem. And, and, and so it relates to our logo. And uh, with that, I will hand over to, to Laura. Thank you. Thanks, Julian. Okay, can you see the screen? Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, let me introduce a bit myself. I'm Laura Berlassina from Fondazione Politecnico di Milano. Uh, I'm a project manager, but I'm primarily a graphic designer, and my activities are focused mainly on the development of digital learning projects. You already had a little preview of our logo, but now I will make a quick description of it uh, to do a sort of summary of what uh, Julian has just said. And um, I will try to translate the, the goals and the key points of our project uh, in a visual way. So one of the most important challenges of uh, Incor Plus project is the creation of a community of circles. Uh, indeed, the project is going to host a series of webinars uh, focused on uh, thematic events. And one of these events uh, will be policy, so the institutional strategies for a European OER ecosystem. Then we will have uh, uh, the theme of quality for the construction of a European OER ecosystem. The third theme will be the technology. And then we, um, we will have uh, the innovation and business models. Some of you may be familiar with uh, these colors. Uh, indeed, they are the same of uh, OER Commons uh, logo. And we made this choice to make recognizable also the general theme of the project. However, all these elements are um, strongly connected among them and uh, uh, their movement generate the idea of exchange and collaboration. There are other two very important uh, themes of the project because we are going to realize a strong connection between um, already existent OER repositories. Moreover, this, um, they create a unique circle that can be part, became an integral part of a general dynamic ecosystem. And all these parts generate a circular movement that never ends. Indeed, we have not a starting point or an end, but we have just a dynamic flow. And this can obviously be a standalone symbol that can be declined into the four colors um, to um, better uh, symbolize the, the single theme of the circles. But the logo in its complete part uh, become the O of the word Encore. And the O stands for open. That is uh, uh, the most important value of the project, our plus in a certain sense. I leave the floor to Ulf. Thank you very, very much, Laura. That was so nice, really so nice. And to Giuliano also. Thank you very, very much for this really wonderful graphic journey, actually, which you uh, allowed us to take and to really explain and understand and, in a way, embrace the, the spirit of the circles, where things come together in a perfect circle, and circles are fluent, fluid um, uh, symbols in which information are flowing around and are reaching every corner. So thank you very much for that, Laura. That was really, really nice. 
Um, I think, colleagues, for a moment, for 10 seconds, maybe close all your eyes and imagine a Europe um, or a global environment. But we are now focusing uh, uh, also quite a lot on, 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 on this European ecosystem. But of course, we are open to international collaborations and contacts. That's absolutely clear. We are not restricted to, to Europe with our initiative. But imagine with closed eyes for 10 seconds, an environment in which you can reach educational materials in a transparent way and in an interoperable way, where you can hook into one repository or database and you can maybe reach out to other repositories and databases. That's what Encore is about. It's about an environment in which you find practices and you know who is taking care of what, which policies are working actually, who has made experience with which kind of policies, policies to, to have a transparent overview of um, a strong impact-oriented ways, strategies, policies which work in organizations. Imagine uh, an ecosystem of countries which are sharing and highlighting how businesses are starting to work in their HR departments for training and skilling purposes using open materials. That's what Encore is about and much more. Um, you, you, you have already heard that we are having in the middle, in the O part, in the middle part, um, the circle metaphor. And our project, while of course, okay, it is a European project, it follows the bureaucracy of European projects with work package and so on and so on, milestones, timelines and so on. But while it is doing that, actually, we are trying to look holistically into building a community, into reaching out to the organizations, the actors, those who are interested in open education and open educational resources. So we would like, in the core of our project, to concentrate all energies in the next three to four years on creating communities of practice. And we're going to create four communities of practice, four circles, as we are calling them. One is focused on the issue of innovation, innovation through openness, innovation. We want to prove it. We want to prove the test. We want to show how openness can lead to innovation in education. Another one is on a new understanding of quality moving from control to culture yeah moving from control to culture and community based quality understandings the third one is about strategies and policies within institutions of um, the corporate sector so enterprises but also of the higher education field so strategy and policy and the fifth one, uh, fourth one is about uh, technology which is not really the term which um, justifies what we are doing. It's not about technology. It is really about creating a blueprint of how Europe can network its repositories, databases, open technology infrastructures um, for learning uh, together. That's what we would like to create. And we would like to embed it into the circle work and invite you all from your angles, being, being it a critical one or a supporting and affirmative one, being it divergent processes or convergent processes, um, we would like to invite you and have you participate either as core members, active promoters, leaders of your or the European movement on this, which we would like to see and create Orbit on the periphery, you're invited if you just want to lurk around and um, share information uh, as much as uh, if you want to actively contribute. We are going to run a series of webinars every six months, starting in about half a year, nine months. Um, and um, in these webinars, they will be about thematically focused, open, moments, open moments where we invite everybody, we will reach out to you, 
go to the website which we have created. It's only a landing page today because we have just started with this initiative and we are already here with you, but we have just started with it. We have a landing page. Uh, find the landing page. Maybe somebody can type it into the chat. Find the landing page and register if you would like to have more information uh, on this um, initiative throughout the next years. We're going to have a integration moments where all these four circles and communities are meeting. We have foreseen three such big festivals of integrating knowledge, experience, and creating the European body of open education there in a very new way um, uh, through, through, throughout the next uh, three, three years. So that's exactly what Laura told you. Innovation, policy, technology, quality coming together in a circle, creating the, oh, the core element of Encore, that's the European network for catalyzing open education. We have now um, invited you to share your thoughts, share your uh, insights, uh, recommendations. Uh, I don't know if we have already um, some contributions, otherwise I will come back to that. I'm looking into the um, um, question answer tool. There is nothing yet in there. Um, colleagues, we really would like your information and your knowledge and your inspirations. Tell us what you think about this, um, this initiative. Tell us if you know about um, similar initiatives. Uh, and type it into the chat or into the question and answer um, uh, tool. We'll come to back, back to that later. Um, for now, I'm going to introduce you to the um, next part of our webinar. It is um, the moment in which we start our chat show. What about Open? What about Encore? You will learn for, you will learn to know, get to know, four main partners and four main topics. Um, Michaela Trenko, I'm always pronouncing that, pronouncing that in the wrong way. I'm afraid, Michaela. Uh, Anna Farrell, Robert Farrow from the Open University. Anna Farrell from the Dublin City University in Ireland. And myself, I will be part. And now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Tina, and um, who will moderate this and ask her, Tina, should I stop my screen sharing or leave it with that? Um, Ulf, I think you can uh, leave it on. That's fine. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome from my side also. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm an academic researcher at uh, DHPW, which is the organization that Ulf is um, also representing today. Um, you've already heard a lot about our project in terms of content, in terms of the idea of the communities, the vision where we would like to reach in about three years from now. Um, but community is also about people, which is why um, I have the lovely um, task today to introduce you to four people in more detail, um, which are behind the project, but which also all of them have a really strong connect with open education and open educational resources. Um, so I would kindly um, request uh, Michaela, Orna, Robert, um, and Ulf to come together as a panel. Uh, just one second. Uh, yep. Maybe we do it in that way. Okay, sure, that's fine also. Um, so, um, we've heard a lot about um, the vision. Um, now, um, I would like the four of you, Michaela, Orna, Ulf, and Rob, um, if you could just briefly share a little bit about what excites you about open education and open educational resources. What is your personal connect to this topic? After all, it's about community, it's about the people, and it's about the passion that everyone in this project has, and hopefully also all of you listening today, um, who we might be able to convince to join us in one of the circles. Um, so, uh, Michaela, would you maybe like to start? Hello, everyone. Just for the record, Michaela Chernko, we're getting there. <laughs> Michaela, um, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 
so no, no problem at all. So I'm here with the Knowledge for All Foundation. Uh, but uh, Tina, you said to make it personal because yes, I also share this belief that it is personal and passion. I am passionate about this. So my connection to OER is um, it's been going on for quite some time now, almost ten years. It started with the VideoLectures.net uh, repository, which I'm still um, uh, part of, uh, which is the largest uh, scientific video uh, repository. Uh, from that on, we are uh, moving on to UNESCO with the award for doing that work that we did. And from the United Nations uh, award, it came the connect. And through that, we also had the privilege to participate with the uh, OER recommendation, which was already mentioned today. And of course, through all of this content, open educational resources, uh, we also applied some projects and I'm here in the form of um, someone who should talk a little bit about technology, but that later. Uh, so I'm just going to skip to my personal, I've been thinking about what would be my personal uh, passion about it. Uh, and I think it's very simple and very much used in our communities. It's uh, just improving access to knowledge. Really simple. That That would be my mission with all the work that I do. Thank you, Michaela, for sharing your background and your passion and your expertise and also your strong belief in, in OER and, and open education. Um, I would then move on to Rob. Rob, what excites, about, what excites you about open education and open educational resources? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rob Farrow. I'm a senior research fellow at the Open University in the UK. And I've been doing... Um, open education research and working on different projects around open education for nearly 10 years now. Um, and before I started doing um, ed tech stuff, I was a postgraduate philosophy student. And um, I see in open education a sort of continuity with some of the themes that have interested me ever since, you know, ever since I started doing philosophy really, like normativity, autonomy, creativity, modernity, um, reproduction in society, communication. So some of these things that I've been interested in philosophically for a long time uh, are quite sort of apparent in the field of open education. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in OER as a route towards social justice, to, um, to facilitating new forms of collaboration and interaction, um, and also as a, a way of holding a lens up to our existing educational systems um, to help us understand what might be working or not working very well um, because it's a point of departure a point of difference to our kind of traditional systems mm -hmm. thank you very much rob is there one strong belief you can share with us that yeah i think um i think it's the idea that uh, oer provides a focus and a, an avenue for uh, social justice and alternative um, practices um, and critique. Uh -huh. Thank you for the introduction, Rob. And we're hoping to hear a little bit more about how potentially Encore Plus can support in implementing those visions that you just shared in just a little bit. Uh, but for the time being, uh, Orna, could I please ask you to briefly introduce yourself and share a strong belief? about open education uh, and open educational resources with us, please. Thanks, Tina. Yeah, hi, Orna Farrell here from DCU. Um, I was just trying to think back to when I, when I first started encountering openness and, and I've arrived at about 2008 when I started experimenting with uh, the open source platform Mahara um, and, and, and also previously Moodle. So they were my first kind of experiences with uh, open platforms. But since then, I became involved in a few funded projects, one in particular, uh, the Student Success Toolbox, where we created OERs. And, and that was kind of where I started to develop an interest, learned about Creative Commons licensing, even just the idea of an OER. Um, and that was funded by the National Forum, which is a, a national body in Ireland. Uh, and I think James is, is also on the call somewhere. He, he was That was his project. But that's, that's kind of what, what piqued my interest. And in terms of beliefs um, or strong strong beliefs, I think is, is the word you're using, Tina. Um, 
I think my philosophical beliefs are that knowledge should be open. Uh, and that's why I think they re- open education and OERs resonates with me. I believe in access to education. I believe in equality. Uh, and the more open our knowledge, uh, the more possible it is for people to access that knowledge. Um, and I don't really agree with the idea of locking important knowledge behind paywalls. Um, so if you're going to create something, why not make it open so that others can benefit from your creation? So true. Thank you so much, Orna, for sharing. Ulf, last but not least, what excites you about open education and open educational resources? And what is your strong belief you would like to share with us today? Well, I, I, um, I'm, I'm a real user of open educational resources myself. I hardly create uh, my own teaching materials anymore, any longer. <laughs> And I also produce with my students uh, essays, podcasts, uh, film clips, which we then share into the open. Um, so, so that's what connects me in my everyday practices. But what really um, got me going was 10 years ago when I understood that um, with open educational resources, you can also um, start to think about not just opening up the resources, making them available uh, under Creative Commons licenses so that others can use it, but to also open up the educational designs, the educational scenarios. And so that was um, back 10 years ago when we created this concept of open education practice. And that is really something where I am very passionate about Open education practices basically means to open up your education design. So to allow your students more and more to decide on their learning pathways and on their learning methodologies and even on their learning objectives in the frame maybe which you can, let's say, justify uh, as a university. And at the same time, doing that while using open educational resources and producing open educational resources. So these are learning environments which are really empowering students and um, supporting them on their pathway to, to autonomous learners for the future. And that's what really excites me there. So open all the way, Ulf. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Ulf, maybe we'll uh, continue with you right away. Um, you already mentioned that you, for instance, want to move from control to culture when it comes to a community-driven quality concept for OER. Um, what will this? What, what is the idea at Encore as part of the Encore Plus project of how to kind of tackle this um, or achieve this? Yeah, it's a, a quality is a real, let's say, multifaceted. <laughs> concept. Um, when it comes to, to open education resources and quality or open education and quality, um, it is really, really difficult to find hard, clear um, criteria because um, open education resources are by nature used in different education contexts. And it depends on the fit of the resource, the target group and the context which makes the quality in the end of the day. So there are no generic, there are no real generic uh, edu uh, quality criteria which have an education impact. Of course, there are quality criteria which have uh, uh, an impact on the, on, the, on the media, the interoperability and so on and so on. But on the education, the learning really, yeah, that's very, very difficult. But what we can see, and that's the new approach which we would like to explore, what we can see is that there are communities out there which are around, situated around repositories, around um, not always repositories, but sharing hubs. Sometimes these are not repositories, but just groups of colleagues sharing things on a server. Uh, in a faculty, yeah? So they make their materials open. And, and in these communities, there is one thing existing, which um, in a way leads into this kind of beneficial sharing with each other, where you give feedback, where you improve, where you share, where you reuse. And that's the issue of trust. 
So in these communities, there is trust. And we would like to, let's say, reframe this um, concept of quality um, and infuse it and charge it with this concept of trust. We would like to find in Europe communities and assess and explore the way they manage to build trust. And we are very interested, if you know of such a community out there now, uh, hearing and listening and, and viewing us, um, where you say, yeah, that's a good example. They, they have good quality resources where I go because I trust them, I know them, and that's, that's a, a good experience. And we would like to try to learn from that, how to build that in a way, technologies of trusted community sharing. That's what we would like to uh, understand and, 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 and so extract from, from the community. That's a new, new way we would like to propose to the uh, community. And Ulf, um, if, if one was to join uh, this circle uh, relating to um, quality, what roughly would that look like? Or what would I get out of it if I joined the circle? So if we're thinking about the audience, they might wonder, okay, so roughly how does it work? Basically, what you would like to take out of that is we're going to have open workshop meetings. In these open workshop meetings, we're going to present and assess good practice examples from across Europe. You would learn to know people who are actually involved in quality work in open um, communities in from open education uh, resource communities. You would um, take away uh, conceptual um, um, let's say conceptual, um, um, conceptual uh, value for your own work as a researcher, as a policy maker, you would be informed about which policies on quality or which policy environments conditions on quality do work. As an institutional leader, you would probably take away ideas of where you can steer your um, institution in order to create a high quality ecosystem of sharing cultures within your institution and as an educational professional you would learn and i think that's actually the most the, what i think is the most important um, group uh, of people you would learn how you can enter into trusted um, conversations into trustful and, and trust building conversations uh, with your colleagues in your department and how others are doing that. I think this is what, what we are looking at really in our circle, in our open group. But the agenda to be worked on is really to be defined by those who are uh, there. Great, by those who are interested in the topic. And just to reiterate once more, it's an open group and it's, gro it's open to anyone, no matter what uh, background you have as such. But you believe there's a there's a specific relevance for people with an educational context, in a way. Okay, so um, Ulf, you um, you spoke about certain repositories, whether they're actually technical or more on a smaller scale within certain groups of colleagues. Uh, Michaela, um, what do you see as the important challenges and a potential contribution from Encore Plus side uh, when it comes to technology topics? Um, <clears throat> I think the, the challenges that we also tried to solve beforehand already with our projects, namely that would be the XFGON project, which Ulf listed in, the, in his initial list, um, is the, the questions of multilinguality, cross-domain um, search, cross-cultural search, and connecting, basically connecting OERs in this kind of cross way. So technology does have a potential to optimize this. And I'd actually, I'd like to refer to a question that was posted by um, Paola, I believe. Um, I think that uh, it, can, it, can support, it can support the integration of na existing network uh, of OERs. That's, uh, that's something that uh, also is, could be a challenge in the sense of uh, connecting uh, with, the, with the intent to make it grow the community and the resources. Um, of course, there's technical challenges everywhere you look. There's also solutions, but uh, based on this long-term understanding of, of 
uh, learners interactions there's much work to be done in in looking at and also judging not not just developing solutions but seeing what is the the proper solutions from the point of ethics and so on to to do what some um uh, recommendation systems to um again improve discoverability of oer um so i think these are the challenges that that are addressed within Anko. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, but is, let's say, the tech community mainly for techies or is it open to everyone? Uh, actually, I think this is the main reason why any, anyone can join, because uh, we are anything that we've developed, uh, our researchers that contribute to this are first of all needed to understand OER and the technology is supposed to be supporting and you, you are not uh, um, a teacher, a learner is not expected to understand technology, but it's hugely valuable to get uh, impact from the point of UX and, and the learning experience again. Uh, so uh, absolutely not, you know, we are, um, the, the more diverse, the more interdisciplinary uh, circle this would become, community this would build, the more um, progress we could make. Great. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much, uh, Michaela. And that's exactly also what our project stands for. We're like a big group of with interdisciplinary and, and very diverse backgrounds. And that's what, what really adds the value. So to everyone in the audience, please do uh, consider contributing your insights either now in the chat or if you say, oh, I think the circle concept sounds interesting. Please do keep me posted. Do let us know. Um, Orna. Um, what does all of this look like in a bit more detail when it comes to policy or strategy? Um, what, are, what is Encore Plus hoping to achieve there? Which challenges will be uh, taken into consideration? Thanks, Tina. Um, so, in a way, similar challenges, but but a, a kind of very patchy uh, uh, policy and strategy landscape some pockets of big engagement uh, in higher ed and, and uh, other educational contexts. But the difference with Encore Plus to possibly other or previous projects around open education is the focus on business. So in the policy work package, work package four, we're going to be, first of all, doing some desk research around you know, what policies and strategies exist already in both the education and business contexts. We're going to be uh, launching calls for examples of good practice from business and education. Um, and we're going to gather those examples. And then the kind of final big outcome will be a set of policy guidelines um, for business and higher ed and or possibly two sets, in fact, because they, they're quite a quite two, two quite different groups and quite different needs. Um, in order to support them to develop their policy and strategy around open education, OEP or OER, whichever whichever term we're using. Um, so I think there's a lot of people here from the educational context here today. It's it, it's people from the business context, I think, um, we're, we're really reaching out to. So if anyone here is up to cool open education practice in the realm of business, sign up, tell your friends. Um, so I think that's kind of the key, the key bit in the policy arena, Tina. We're, we're building on existing policy already as well. There's the Open Up Europe framework, uh, and then also obviously the UNESCO uh, framework as well. So it's a matter of gathering that together, analyzing it, and uh, coming up with a kind of new map slash framework uh, that will support the ecosystem that we want to build. So if, if I have a bit of expertise in the field or any practical experience, I can basically also chip in the circle and add my five cents to it and kind of shape the policy and strategy topic for OER in Europe for the future to come, correct? Absolutely. And, and, and with policy, the, you know yourself, the more consultation and participation, the better it will represent the needs of the group. Um, so bottom up rather than top down. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Orna, for sharing a bit, a few more details. Um, Encore Plus is still at the beginning. Um, we recently launched the project, but it's great to already hear which direction it, it will be heading 
in, in the future. Uh, and I hope you're all excited about what we're sharing today. Um, last but not least, Rob, what about innovation? Wolf already briefly touched upon this topic, but what does what what do you think innovation looks like, and how will it be part of Encore Plus? Thank you. Um, well, obviously, OER themselves are an innovation, um, and they're a kind of response to the innovation that was copyright. So we're always kind of innovating. We're always kind of developing new approaches and new technologies. Um, but the thing they always say about innovation is that it happens in silos. Uh, so the question is, how do we take innovations from their sort of natural environment and spread them more quickly throughout the whole ecosystem um, around uh, Europe? So some of the things we'll be looking at is to try to understand and describe innovation with OER, how it's happening. Uh, what's transferable about it, how other people can recreate something that someone's been able to do. Um, so part of that is developing a framework for evaluating innovation in an OER context. Um, and that's a, a tool that we're planning to share with the community um, uh, to use as well. Um, but when we do identify interesting cases, what do we do with them? How do we share them? What's the right kind of communication around them? And in a way, we want to be the kind of lightning conductor so that when something interesting is happening, quickly we can share the, uh, the right message around it to help other people to um, potentially just implement that sort of thing in their own context. But it's more than that because it's also the, the changing mindset that accompanies innovation. So how do we create a, a community around this circle of innovators who have an innovation mindset who want to try new things, learn from each other's experiences, but do it in an open way, in a collaborative way, rather than the sort of traditional competitive way. Um, so I think that um, for us to more fully understand exactly what the value propositions are, we need to encourage people to share and to mutually arrive at a kind of uh, improved understanding of the, the potential and the application of open educational resources. Great, thank you, Rob. Um, we still have a few minutes left uh, for our chat show. I think, uh, did anybody hear something that they would like to react, react to that they heard from your peers right now? Yes, please, Ulf. <laughs> that, that what um, becomes uh, apparent is that really, um, and, and how my, my colleagues who are leading these different perspectives on OER and, and uh, us as well, it really becomes apparent that we would like to facilitate what's already happening out there. Um, and through facilitating, through collecting, through gathering, through looking at it and making it available to everybody in the community, it's going to create a whole new quality. Uh, open, openness is not going to, to mean something shady and vague. It's going to um, be pulled into um, uh, the light of clarity in a way uh, and uh, being used, being, being able then to use it in a, in a clear and trustful, trustful way. Um, Plus, and that's going to be really interested and interesting, and probably you can 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 see that also. Um, we are one initiative, one framework, and we are going to work together on these cross-cutting issues also between innovation and quality, and technology and policy, um, and not just uh, so to speak uh, focus them in a in a separate way. And that's going to be really, really exciting. Plus, we're going to do that in an open workshop-like way where everybody is invited really to join and, and learn and participate in the, in the uh, discussion. Thank you all for underlining once more. It's, it's, it's not about reinventing the wheel, but it's, as you said, about 
bringing together what's what's already there and building upon it. And I do see somebody in the chat also agreeing that yes, absolutely yes. Um, so I think you hit a nerve there. Um, so, um, oh, and thanks, uh, Michaela, for sharing some links in the chat also. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I think maybe once more call to everyone in the audience. Um, now you've heard a little bit more. If you do have suggestions of uh, projects we should look at, if you have any experience you want to share, if you want to give us a brief feedback, what you think about what you've heard so far, um, if you have an opinion on our logo, please do let us know. Feel free to post in the chat. Um, and um, Ulf, otherwise, shall we move on to the second poll then? Yes, let's do that. Thank you very much to the colleagues um, for the different um, perspectives now. Thank you very much, Tina, for moderating in such a good and lively way. Very, very um, good. And we have prepared um, one more poll now. And the question to all of you, we have a, a growing number of participants still. Uh, some, some are uh, still joining, uh, which is good. Is um, Think about these circles which we discussed now. Think about the circles and think about which would be your most interest, which, which, in which circle would you be most interested to join. That's uh, what the next poll is about. You can also have several choices uh, and tell us what would be your interest, your most, most interesting uh, theme. So, which circles would you be most interested in? Is it innovation through OER? Is it institutional policies for OER? Is it a new community-driven quality concept for OER? Or a blueprint for a technical framework for OER? Or several of these choices? Uh, let us know, please. Um, while we are waiting, uh, we have two questions in um, the question answer section for later on so far. So, no, three actually now. So, if you have more questions or comments, as I said, we are also looking for statements, comments, peer feedback for what you have heard today, uh, encouragement, <laughs> also criticism. Um, so, so, let us know there. And we have much more feedback, really a lot of uh, rich feedback. Uh, also links uh, and so on in um, the chat. So thank you very much uh, for that. That's uh, really, really great. So Tina, I think we can close the poll. Don't know how many people have participated. I don't see that yet, but uh, we will see how the interest. Ah. So innovation is the top priority for most of you, innovation through OER, very interesting. Rob, you will be happy to hear that. Um, institutional policies, then um, a new community-driven quality concept. Ah, I'm happy to hear that. Um, but I think that the main message is that there is interest in all the four topics. Uh, and uh, that's really good to see. So thank you very much. I'm just counting, actually. Um, how many people have participated? 73 have participated. Um, two thirds of our participants. Um, so very interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah, as a moderator, I am moving on to the next uh, step in our, um, I'm just shuffling my, um, Slides here. I'm moving on to the next step in our uh, webinar. Um, thank you again for the chat show participants, uh, our colleagues, our experts for the different uh, streams of the initiative. Um, and thank you for taking part in the poll. I'm moving on now to the next, and that is to hand over the word to Torun. Uh, the General Secretary of the International Council for Open and Distance Education, um, to give a greeting uh, from your side. So, Toron, over to you. What do you think about this initiative and where would you like to would like it to go and to steer it, actually? Thank you, Ulf. 
Yes, I will start with a brief introduction of ICD to the ones uh, who are new to us. Um, ICD stands for the International Council for Open and Distance Education, and we are a global uh, membership association with uh, members in over 75 countries across all the world regions. Uh, we have advocated and facilitated for inclusive access to quality education for more than 80 years through various technologies and methodologies. We are also an NGO in a formal consultative partnership with UNESCO, which means that we are committed to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with particular focus on the SDG4, which is about inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all. And goal number four is unthinkable without increased access to education through flexible study provision, adaptive learning methods, supportive technologies and proper infrastructure, which is what ICD members aim to further develop and improve every day. And open education and OER is through the UNESCO OER recommendation that was adopted by all UNESCO member states in 2019, an important cornerstone of the Sustainable Development Goal 4. So with this background, ICD's vision is to achieve the potential of open, flexible and distance learning created through our members, partners and learning communities. And the Encore Plus project fits very well with the ICD's strategic goals and prioritized activities for the coming years, because it seeks to investigate and build on the potential of OER when it comes to policies, quality, education, new technologies and innovation and entrepreneurship. So this multi-stakeholder approach uh, is at the very heart of the project. It is to connect and develop the value propositions of what we are in open education for both academia and the industry and private business. And in the spirit of openness, um, the Encore Plus project aims to engage and connect with relevant actors and projects also outside of Europe, because we truly believe that the key learnings and outputs from this European project may be replicable in other regional and cultural contexts. So this is why we invite all of you who have an interest in open education and innovation and entrepreneurship with OER to connect with the Encore project and more specifically our engagement circle, which has been introduced now. And you may simply uh, do that by um, signing up for interest on the project website, encoreproject.eu. Uh, the link has been shared in the, in the chat. And make sure to register today. You will receive updates from the project and invitation to engagement events in the coming months and years. This is a three-year project. So with that, do not hesitate to take contact with uh, our project manager, Juliana Grandli, or myself, should you have questions, suggestions, or inputs from other relevant projects and resources that the Encore project should know about and take into account when building the European ecosystem for OER. And I've seen that many of you already did so in the chat. So that's that's great with the support and the engagement. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, I'll hand it back over to, to Ulf. Thank you very much, Tarun. Very, very good. Yeah, I really can only reiterate and emphasize um, that uh, we are um, um, an initiative to reach out to um, integrate and to network together like just like Toron said it and that um, uh, it's really the the core of the issue to improve access to quality education um, uh, and to improve the situation yeah we are now at the end actually of our webinar but we have promised that we are going to take some questions from the audience. And Tina, tell me, do we have questions actually? We do, Ulf. Um, actually, we have quite a few. I've collected them for you in a document just to make it a little bit easier across the Q&A in the chat. Okay. Can you see those? Yes, I see them. Otherwise, I'm happy to help out also. So let's let's go over them and see if we can uh, answer them collectively and see who is going to. How will you handle the problem of motivation of teachers to use OER? How will you handle the problem of motivation of teachers to use OER? Who can 
answer there. Who has an idea? Orna, maybe, Michaela, um, Rob? Uh, I don't mind having first go at that one. Um, I think uh, one thing that often happens is educators are not that receptive to the idea of OER because it's just one more thing for them to try and do when they're already very stretched and they feel very time poor. So one way of approaching this is to demonstrate quite clearly how OER solves problems for educators, rather than saying this is like this extra thing that everyone has to do on top of their other job. Because I don't think that gets you very far with people who are already um, quite stretched in their, in their role. So then it becomes a question of how do you get the communication right? How do you get the messaging right? So that they, they quickly understand what you're trying to say about, their, about the benefits of OER to them. Um, but it helps to target those kind of messages at very specific stakeholders. So one thing I think we'd like to do in this project is establish those gr different groups, how to communicate with them and how to get the messaging right so that they see this as a positive thing from the start um, and something that they, they want to do and they see the benefit of. Thank you. Anybody else go on this question about this motivation, acceptance, uptake in teaching, teachers' motivation? Uh, Sylvia, do you what? What is your opinion? Actually, I know that you are that you are in this field very much. Thanks, all. Uh, okay, my name is Sylvia Valdiris. I'm from Colombia. I'm in in the other part of the world in this moment. Uh, I, I'm convinced the teachers are very interested in improve also the, the teaching practice in order to, uh, to provoke a, a, a really good learning in their students. So I think this is the, the main motivation of the teachers, but we need to uh, communicate they, they, as Rob mentioned, uh, what is the way? Because in many cases, uh, the problem is the teacher uh, don't have the, the tools to uh, co-create, for example, with other teachers, uh, OERs, or they don't have uh, enough knowledge about where are these tools and how to use them. So I think uh, learn is also a really good uh, uh, way to engage the teacher. I mean, uh, in this in this way, uh, you go you go to obtain learning for you to to improve your your, your teaching practice. I think this is a is a good way to engage the teachers. Thank you very much, Sylvia. It's also an interesting story. I'm just reminded of I was the vice when I was the vice president of my my university. I wanted to start an OER initiative um, between our nine different campuses. It's a huge university, and I thought that would be a good thing to do. And nobody wanted to do it actually. So <laughs> it was my first experience, not my first, but it was one of my experiences. And the interesting thing was that. When I went around the campus and into the faculties and schools and I talked to the people about sharing their resources, they were not very fond of doing that as an OER, but they told me actually uh, that they are doing that already. Many, many um, occasions and examples were surfacing where colleagues were sharing with each other this colleague with that colleague with the other five colleagues of the and they had a server sometimes one one school even had a the whole curriculum um, um, so to speak mirrored on a server where they are uh, were feeding in but they didn't do it in the open they, they did it amongst them and i was learning that um, oer acceptance is also about an institutional creating an institutional sharing culture really and i think this is an important um, uh, issue for, for motivation and building acceptance. We have another question. OERs from Hilary McQueen. Uh, the, the, the last question was, by the way, from Gottfried, Gottfried Charney, which I know. Hi, Gottfried. Um, Hilary McQueen, uh, OERs are expensive to create. Is that perhaps a barrier to trust and openness? 
I don't know. Are OERs creative to, uh, expensive to create? Is it a cost uh, issue there? Michela, what do you think? I'm picking out people now. <laughs> um, well, in, in my experience, there's OERs created just about all the time everywhere, especially in the new conditions that we found ourselves in. People had to get creative and there's so much content and the content needs to be shared. There's a need, there's a genuine need. Uh, so I would venture a guess that, it's a guess that they're not create, uh, expensive to create. I think that more, uh, uh, the bigger issue is about raising awareness still. Um, that that would be, uh, I think that the ba barrier to the trust and openness part, uh, as we always in our experience speaking to educators and learners, uh, seems to be some sort of guarantee of quality. That I would say that is a um, is a barrier um, for trust and and openness and bigger uh, uptake. The, per the perceived quality is a is a big barrier, yeah. And the fear that um, there is no what, what people call accreditation or certification or something like that, which is a, a concept which is often not really applying when, they, when it's used. <laughs> But there is a fear around that. If I use that, is it really first rate? Is it really of value to me or not? That's, that's a fear and we need to tackle that. Yeah, yeah Rob, please go. Um, just on this idea of uh, the cost of production, I think when people first move towards uh, OER, then there can be a, a slight inefficiency because they have to learn, okay, what is this open licensing about? How does all this stuff work? Maybe they have to start thinking a bit more about uh, assembling resources than if they were already using stuff that was just in a textbook and that kind of thing. But once they've got past that bit, then it's a lot more efficient. And also the more OER that's out there, the more there is in the commons, then the more efficient and the cheaper it is to produce resources. But the key thing is that for both proprietary and open resources, uh, it's really a matter of quality, how much it costs, right? And how much, it, it, how much time it takes to put it together. The more, the higher the level of quality, the longer it's going to take to do something. But um, essentially there's no real difference between um, putting stuff together with open resources or non-open resources, um, and the activity is the same. Um, but when we have a well-developed commons and when we have ways of software and platforms designed around making this whole process easier, the further we get into this, the easier and the cheaper and the, the quicker it should be. Thanks, uh, Rob. We, we have another question which I would like to take. Uh, from, um, where, where is it? Here, Delma Rocha. And it's about the, the enterprises and companies, the private uh, sector. And maybe Rob, you can, can uh, also talk about that a little bit. Um, it's, the question goes like that. What to do so that the companies that dominate the market and the production of software and hardware worldwide have a better attitude to the fact that humanity needs to be connected virtually. So um, let me rephrase it also a little bit. I, 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 the question is clear, but let me also uh, rephrase it a little bit into, into, into this direction to ask a question, how are we going to, to work on this issue to, to make this OERs a real value perspective to companies also, not just higher education? Uh, well, in some ways, there's some similarities with what I was just saying about um, explaining the value proposition to educators. I think in the case of businesses, um, just like educators, they care about time, they care about money. These are things that we know OER can make a difference to uh, and can help with. Where the difference is, is that commercial businesses tend to be more focused around a sort of competition model and they tend to be less inclined to share anything that they think could um, affect their um, business advantage. So um, different messaging, um, in a way they don't have to share, right? They can just you know, make use of open resources in developing their own training materials or something like that. And that's fine, you can do that. You can do that within open context. So I think there are, there are sort of um, differences 
and sort of different modulations in terms of how people can actually be involved with this kind of initiative. And being open isn't just one thing that everyone has to now do it this way. Um, so uh, the thing that kind of interests me is how do we empower different stakeholders? How do we get them to see that openness is a way for them to empower themselves and to give themselves greater power, greater freedom in what they do? Um, I'm not sure we've perfected that yet, but I think that that is the essence of what um, I think anyone would find appealing. Here's a way to give yourself some more power and, and to sort of extend your reach. Um, I think that matters to businesses. If we can just show them that it's a clear way for them to save time or money, then I don't see why well, they wouldn't be interested. Thank you very much. Anybody else who wants to have a go, just raise your hands and then I'll turn to you. Other than that, meanwhile, I'm going to take another question. Maybe Orna, I don't know if you, you have an idea on this one, uh, which I haven't yet uh, read out, but I'm going to read it out. What about the tacit knowledge, the experiences, the tacit knowledge from course design, open course design and delivery? Um, what about that, actually? How to, um, let's say, share that and, and tap into that? Because it says here that has a large impact on the successful use of resources. Yeah, that's an interesting one, actually, because, yeah, if you're going to repackage or reuse or remix something that you're taking, you would definitely need to have a bit of knowledge of course design and maybe have some information about the design, maybe even framework behind a resource. Um, I don't think it's it's a, a have to have having remixed something quite recently myself from one thing into another thing. Um, I think uh, it I think would be no harm, but I think you'd have to impose design models on people, and, and I I don't think that's really in the spirit of the open kind of movement. But maybe it would be a nice thing to to have in the metadata, you know this resource was designed using the ABC learning design framework or, you know, that might help the person reusing, having a, have a better understanding of how to then adapt to their own context. Um, so I don't know, did I answer the question, Ulf? I feel yes, but I also would like to uh, look into the eyes of, of other colleagues. Uh, do you have an idea, another idea to add? No, thank you. Okay. And we have another one also with a view to the time I'm, I'm progressing there. From my perspective, trust is number one priority, both in business and academia. Cooperation and collaboration will definitely benefit everyone. Benefit everyone. Yet, how do you plan to deal with a possible copyright violation? What kind of strategies could be applied to prevent copyright infringement things? I think that's maybe also an answer, which um, uh, a question which uh, goes into um, is, is true and, and um, is um, directed at the, at the business field, I can imagine. Who, who has an idea from you colleagues on that? To who can I pass that? How to deal with possible copyright violations? Um, well, I can have a go. Um, I mean, essentially, copyright violations are dealt with by copyright law. Um, open licensing just sits on top of all that. Um, and in a way, if you don't want to be uh, found in violation of copyright, only use open licenses, and you will never be in violation of copyright. Assuming that the open license, that everything is licensed correctly in the first place, and the person who applies the license is the right person to do that, then it's pretty hard to get done for copyright violation as long as you abide by the terms of the license. If you're very worried about it, just go for CC0 or something like that, or public domain. No, you can't be, um, there can't be any violation of that copyright because there is no copyright on it. So, um, so yeah, I can see how it's definitely been like, historically. The fear of copyright violation has arguably been a barrier to innovation in teaching because when people put their stuff together, lots of people are using copyrighted stuff. Um, even if it's just an image from a Google search or something and they haven't got time to check it, they don't know about databases they can go to for uh, copyright free images. 
So what ends up happening? They don't share those things. They only use them in a very select number of people. Um, and that means that it never enters the public domain for a wider use. So, um, so one way of sort of strengthening the commons is to educate people around how open licensing works, how it can be used to protect you and your own works. Um, because I think that's the sort of reassurance. And as you say, all about trust, that's the kind of, um, that's the sort of situation we want to get to really, that people feel confident using OER. So thank you very much, Rob. Thank you very much, uh, all other colleagues. We have um, coming, we, we are actually now really approaching the end of our webinar. I don't want to keep you over time. So we have three minutes left on my watch. Um, yeah, it has been a pleasure to have you here this afternoon. Um, this webinar has um, been a real collaborative effort and I would like to thank all my colleagues uh, for being here and weaving your ideas into this, what has now um, been uh, the Encore webinar. Uh, and I would also like to thank all of you participants um, to ask questions and to engage into the chat. I would like to um, reiterate Torun's request to go to the website and register if you're interested um, because you can very soon be invited um, to learn more about the circles, the communities which we are creating for the next three to four years. For the next time being, we're going to take care of these different uh, questions and perspectives um, and we would really like to meet you with your experiences and in a way create value through creating the network. The network, the European network of catalyzing uh, OER uh, and open education. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much to my colleague Tina also for um, uh, organizing and pulling strings in the back and moderating the chat show to Juliane, to Laura for creating this visual story also uh, for the project to our four chat show guests, to Toron, to everybody, to the Eden community, um, who is our, in a way, uh, host and who are the, the people who are watching us today. Um, thank you for uh, making this happen. Um, I'm going to share then the final uh, slides with you, which are really the um, outlook on what's going to be next. We are part here of the um, Open Education Week of Eden, the 2021 Open Education uh, Week. Um, and tomorrow at five o'clock, Tomorrow at five o'clock, is it true? Yeah, tomorrow at five o'clock, we're going to have the next webinar. So if you're interested, come and log in. It's uh, about online educational courses on cultural topics, helping the creative industries sector reinvent itself during a crisis. And it is um, the network of academic professionals of Eden, which is um, offering this. So thank you very much to everybody and uh, have a nice evening and see you around on openness, on open education, open educational resources, and let's be in touch. Thank you very much.